One of the hardest parts of being a reviewer is separating the hype of a new product from its actual performance. This is the Logitech Blue Sona. And I guess I should explain that a bit. This is more of a blue microphone product than it is a Logitech project. This is from a well-established microphone company, not from an established computer peripheral company. There's a big difference. Aside from that, I wasn't sent this product. I bought it with me own pennies. So if you do like this video, could you drop a like? Helps out a lot and helps me be able to continue purchasing mics like this for review. Now I do have to say the packaging for this thing is pretty sweet and it has very much that gamer vibe when you get to it, like super gamer vibes. You get the microphone, you get an alternately colored pop sock for showing off your personality and a 5 8 to 3 8 reducer for connecting it to a boom. And that's pretty much it. Though I do have to say the presentation is rather nice for a microphone. Also, you can keep the box as a bit of a protection for longer term storage as well. That's a nice bonus. Now, the Blue Sona is attacking the exact same market that the SM7B exists in, and it's looking to challenge the supremacy of it. And it has a few tricks up its sleeve to do just that. Now, the big one is the included inline preamp that gives this thing a massive boost that the SM7B does not have. This isn't a new play by a mic company, though. The SE Dynacaster did that as well, and we're going to make sure that comparison gets mixed in as well. Now, this mic is aimed directly at streamers and content creators. It also throws that broadcast term into its name. So that brings a few other mics into the fold for the comparisons as well. Now, as for the body of it, it is quite robust. The mic sock is magnetic, unlike the SM7B, which is a compression fit sock. The foam's about the same thickness as the SM7B Classic sock, but it's not quite as long. Also, I should point out that the mic capsule in the Sona is a bit closer to the mouth than the SM7B. Not a massive amount, but it is a difference. So you do have to keep that in mind. This thing is a dynamic super cardioid microphone. The frequency response is 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz. Sensitivity of 20.97 millivolts per pascal, max SPL of 129 dB SPL, and a signal to noise ratio of 69.9 dB. Which is a bit of a concerning note, though I would rather not judge this on the numbers, so let's get this thing to talk for itself. Also, I should point out that this thing requires Phantom 4 to work, not the microphone itself, but the preamp that gives it that boost. Now let's do the off-axis rejection for the Logitech Blue Sona. This is me speaking about two inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm about two inches off the side of the capsule. And now I'm speaking into the mic from the rear of the microphone. Now let's check out the plosive rejection ability of this microphone. And I'm actually kind of curious. I'm at about two inches away, so I don't know how this is going to come off. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the Blue Sona. And this one's kind of tough because I'm already pretty close, but I'm going to get even closer, baby. This is me speaking about two inches from the front of the capsule. Now I'm right on top of the microphone. And this is what it sounds like. Two inches away and right on top of the microphone. Now let's take a look at the handling noise of this microphone. Now this is a dual capsule microphone. One is the capsule I'm talking into. And then apparently they have a secondary ca uh, capsule that cancels out a lot of the vibrations and stuff that's happening to the microphone. Okay, now we're taking into consideration the Blue Sona switches. On the back, you have a low cut filter. So this is going to roll off all of those low end frequencies. And you also have a presence boost, which I think this microphone's probably going to really benefit from. So let's start with the roll off first. Now we have the roll off and I'm going to have to put the specs of the roll off up here if they're, they're actually there at all. And this is with a roll off probably somewhere between 80 and a 150. That's what my guess is going to be. Once again, the specs are up here and this is going to take out possibly a little bit of your chestiness, but it'll also take off any of the, the vibrations of the room. Okay. So that's what that roll off is going to do. Now let's look at what the presence boost does. Now we have just the presence boost on, on the blue Sona. Now I haven't listened to too much of it, just through my headphones a little bit. 
And I actually kind of prefer this. I can do my own low cut filter in post, but if you need a low cut filter, I mean, you have it now, you can use it in line. For me, I like doing that kind of stuff in post. Let's go back and let's see what it sounds like without the presence boost again. This is once again, without the presence boost on the blue Sona. And now once again, this is with the presence boost on the blue Sona. This is a square microphone. It does very square things like, like what's its purpose, really? Is it a capsule? Is it a microphone? Who are these microphones? It also has a C, hmm, very interesting. Blue Sona, what a fascinating name. <laughs> Do you want me to keep talking? After these messages, we'll be right back. Now let's do some microphone comparisons. And for this starter, we have the Blue Sona up against the baseline. This is the microphone that every mic company should be shooting to be better than. This is the SM58. Blue Sona SM58. This is the one that if you can't be better than the $99 SM58, why are you even making a microphone? Or at least as good, right? And this is what they sound like when you put them side by side. This is the Blue Sona. The gain is set to about 11 o'clock and this is the sm58 and the gain on the sm58 is set to approximately three o'clock what do you think of these two when you put them side by side once again this is the blue sona and this is the sure sm58 now we have the blue sona up against the se dynacaster and these two microphones are actually really similar where they both have internal preamps boosting the signal to give you a bit more than usual dynamic microphones now both of these have their internal eq profile set to off so they are just as flat as they can be and they both have their internal preamps turned on now this is the se dynacaster with the preamp turned on you can of course turn the preamp on off on this microphone and run it as just a dynamic microphone. When we talk about the amount of gain that is necessary for both of these mics, there is a bit of a differential here. The Blue Sona is running at about 11 o'clock as I was running that with the uh, up against the SM58. The SE Dynacaster though only requires gain at about nine o'clock on the gain dial compared to the Blue Sona. Now, it's not a massive difference. However, when you're talking about a dynamic mic sitting at nine o'clock on the gain dial, that's pretty ridiculous if you ask me. So what do you think then? You've got the Blue Sona and you've got the SE Dynacaster, both of these running for about the same price as well. That's interesting to note. Let me know which one you like down below. Now, and I'm actually kind of sad to say I've got to hold my RE20 in my hand because I lost that little bolt that connects it. Oh, so annoying. I don't have, anyways, it's in the mail, okay? Now we have the Blue Sona up against the first really big rival for broadcasting. This is the RE20. This is the microphone that a lot of people hail as one of the best broadcast microphones of all time. It's definitely done its time in uh, radio studios and all that along the years. And this is the Blue Sona. Now this RE20 is definitely like other dynamics. It does not have an inline preamp. Its gain is set to about 2.30. And again, the Blue Sona is sitting at about 11 o'clock on the gain dial. And these are the differences as we go in between the two microphones. This one being the RE20 and this one being the Blue Sona. And now we have the big kahunas. This is the SM7B and this is the Logitech Blue Sona. Now let's talk gain for a second. The SM7B is darn near pinned on my Focusrite 2i2, third gen by the way. I would say it's at about five, <laughs> maybe 4.30, five o'clock on the gain dial. This is the Blue Sona. Again, you're sitting with your gain dial at about 11 o'clock. Now the actual waveform that's coming through is pretty small. I'm gonna be gaining both of these up in post, but just to think that I'm driving a dynamic microphone at 11 o'clock on the gain dial is pretty impressive. And that is obviously because of the preamp in there. Once again, this is the Blue Sona and it's kind of directly comparing itself to the SM7B. I mean, come on, look at them. Which one do you like, the SM7B or the Blue Sona? So where to start here? This microphone is decent. I think it has a bunch of muddiness for my voice though. The presence boost does kind of solve it. That said, I would much prefer to do my own EQing in post as I think I can get more out of this mic than those switches, which is what I've done here, my own EQ. And I just kind of slapped it on. I didn't refine it much at all. So if you're doing post on your own voice, 
that's something worth thinking about. For my voice, I found the presence boost to really run away with my siblings. I do want to caution though, that will be different for every voice. But for a streamer or a podcaster that doesn't have the luxury of EQing in post, it should work quite well. My wife's voice didn't suffer nearly as much as my own, which is kind of cool to see. I didn't mind her voice on this whatsoever. In the comparisons, you could easily hear the muddiness when comparing to much smoother mics like the SM58 and the RE20. Now that said, this microphone didn't fall flat. In fact, it was very close with the SE Dynacaster, which was kind of cool to see. As for the big boys, it didn't beat out the RE20 or the SM7B in my mind, but it also wasn't blown out of the water by them either. Not a bad showing at all. Now, all that said, if you're running this thing through something like the Revelator or the Roadcaster Pro 2, again, all those things are moot and you can just get this thing sounding fantastic in itself. But again, that presence boost should be okay for most as long as you aren't super sibilant like me. This is a tough one. Now, if this is your Huckleberry and dang it, this thing just touches on all the points for you, especially from an aesthetic perspective, Giver. That inline preamp might be someone's saving grace. That said, the SC Dynacaster is almost a hundred dollars cheaper, and these two mics were pretty closely matched. That right there makes this a really difficult recommendation for me. I would honestly recommend the SC Dynacaster over this almost every single time. Now, if they were a little closer in price, well, that might make it more of a draw but it is really something to consider here. Also, the SM7B is only $50 more expensive. And if you're using that Revelator or Rodecaster Pro 2 already, an extra 50 bucks and you get a legendary microphone. That doesn't spell a whole bunch of success for this mic. Now, don't get me wrong. It is a good microphone. It looks great, but its price point might make this kind of difficult. Now, if you do notice this microphone dropping in price after the holidays, snatch it up quick. Otherwise, personally, save your money and grab an SE Dynacaster. By the way, my full review for that, it's right here.